All this will I bestow upon you if you will prostrate yourself in homage before me. You may know more than I do about the truth of the matter, but it appears that quite a few big successes right now in the universe owe it to a sinister power. So, Satan always answers straight away and delivers the goods, but we know under what condition. Now, Old Nick is not good news at the best of time, but we need to be aware of his tricks. In the visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich, a lot comes out about what actually happened in the desert, and apparently Old Nick was very much around. He was using all kinds of excellent, well thought out ploys to get the Lord out of the desert. So we only have the tip of the iceberg here. If that's the case for the Saviour himself, what's it going to be for us, my friends? All he wants is our soul. And right now, because of his influence, the odds are stacked against us. Lent is a time to stop and pause, look backwards and forwards and stand still. Where am I going? Remember, O oh man, that thou art dust. Each of us equalized at the last breath. <coughs> there is no glory. We are what we are. Nuda cruda, in the balance, as that soul, honest to voice, on the high cross, a bit nervous, a devil on one side, an angel on the other, each tugging as best he can, and a little naked man in the scales, wondering which way all eternity is going to be swayed. All eternity is going to be swayed. Put yourself in that balance. It's the truth. The one truth that old Nick has managed successfully to cancel from the equation. Listen to the average homily at a funeral. Isn't a better place? Mm -hmm. Now, old Nick has a few tricks up his sleeve. The big one right now is distraction. I want to go into this in a little bit of detail because it affects each modern man more than we think. We are the first generation on earth, the first generation in the history of mankind, who has right now total availability to the whole universe in our pocket and in our home. Just like that, we're caught, we're plugged into another soul, other souls, and in the midst, demons. Demons infiltrating the airwaves, the screens, the imagination by porno, all they're soliciting all the time, even the respectful people of the universe, and once in, stuck in, ensconced. <laughs> What's in the imagination? will not go away as quickly as it came in. A few things, my friends, have come out in exorcism. It's not just humanity in general, it has to cope now with this one. It's the church itself that is actually hugely infiltrated and worked upon by strange, sinister forces that want to bring it down. As was warned, through Leo the Thirteenth by that strange vision he had. Hence the Leonine prayers. <coughs> With regard to what characterizes Satan, his language is noise. Noise is the language of hell. There's never a moment of peace and quiet in hell. If you go into what happened in Siberia in the 1980s, the drilling down to the lowest part of the earth 
until the drill was actually started to move so quickly because there was no matter there anymore, it was the beginning of lava. The first 30 seconds were recorded on high, and there you've got the howling of hell. Souls all the time, day and night, howling in despair, forever! There's no coming back. Noise. Hell is full of noise. And those who are in collusion with the master of hell are noisy souls. Noisy, in general, over-talkative specimens. They can't stop talking. They must teach the whole universe all the time, all they know. And will betide anyone who gets in the way. Hot air. Do you know that some years ago, in an exorcism, this came out. The devil was obliged to say certain truths under pressure. And he had to admit he had pushed and was pushing certain things. The altar facing the people, he pushed it as much as he could. Communion in the hand, he pushed it as much as he could. Getting rid of the altar veils, he pushed as much as he could. He even apparently pushed the removal of the pulpits from church. And then the question went on to synods. Do you know what Old Nick had to say about synods? Under pressure he came out with this, with a glee in his tone of voice, which went something like this in translation. Ah, you synods! In Italian said, si chiacchiera! One churns out hot air was the equivalent in English. And he went on, the bishops know full well what they must do. In other words, there were places where he was happy to see them. Hot air. Look at the form of Satan. Teeth, which are fairly sharp. A mouth ever prepared to talk, and when it opens, extremely large. Cross eye, confusion in the head. And in general, well able to make himself lovable to get in, even into children's YouTubes and games. Just a nice little devil and also a few messages attached. Two men married to each other, and so on. There's a word in German for exhaust. It's Auspuff. And a person who is full of exhaust is full of Auspuff. His name is Puff, by the way. A person who can't stop emitting fumes is a little demon upon earth. A heavyweight, a noisy person at the best of times, and someone to be patient with, but not to be overwhelmed by. Therefore, my friends, I would suggest that you make a practical resolution at the beginning of this Lent, that one way of allowing the noisy souls and noisy demons of the world not to be inside you by osmosis, is to once and for all take control of what is controlling you. And I think you know what it is. We, as the first generation, have become slaves to the toy that we have invented and that we don't know how to handle. A day without availability to this thing is quite different from a day when one is always at the beck and call of the next bleep. We don't have to be sacrificing our one Because the Lord can't get through the airwaves full of bleeps and demons. We were not meant to be sacrificed to a screen. So choose. Where do you want to spend your time on earth? Googling and goggling? Or listening to the word of God? For man does not live on internet alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God.
There is more. In France one day, we were told about this gentleman, Jacques Dupont, who at work on the road had had a run-in with a bulldozer. Rather, it was a steam roller. So he, he was taken to hospital. The victim of this accident with a steam roller. His friend went to the hospital and asked, where is Jacques Dupont? And the receptionist looked carefully at the files that she had for the big hospital and after a bit of puzzlement said to him in French, eh, Monsieur, votre ami, sir, your friend, as far as I can make out, is in Ward 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Is that you? Too thinly spread? We can't do everything well. We must choose. Therefore, I give you another clue for limiting the damage of your existence on Earth. Reduce! Reduce drastically! Because not everything that passes your mind has to be taken on board. Because the devil, too, can give inspirations. Anything to get you moving outside yourself. A day with few things done, but well done and calmly, is vastly different from a person who's agitated and nervous and can't stop. His head is too full of clutter. Life is short. Choose where you want to spread your energy. Today is the feast of this hidden saint whose vocation was loving and suffering. Do you know who it is? Can you see? Anyone know? A clue. Last Sunday it was the feast of Our Lady of Lord. Who's the saint? Bernadette. Do you know that her body is completely incorrupt in the van? Do you know that the look on her face is completely angelic? That, by the way, happens to quite a few saints. When they die, even though their life has been atrocious suffering, they start to have a look of angelic sleep upon them. Look at Thérèse of Lisieux a few moments after she's dead. It's a blissful look of peace and painlessness. They say that in heaven we have the perfect age of 33, and that we are angelic in look, but we can detect each other by the same traits. Look upwards, therefore, my friends. Upwards to the communion of saints. Not downwards to the pit of hell, which bit by bit, through the fumes of the internet, are infiltrating the souls of man. Just for one more soul to put in the balance and sway the wrong way forever and ever. Before I stop, I just want to quote this, which the pastor quoted at my father's funeral. This came from Ireland, and I'd given it to Dad. He liked it, and he put it up as you came in the house. And the picture was seen by the pastor who preached on it. And I do the same to you now. It's simple, but profound. Live it. The road of life. I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any fellow creature, let me do it now. For I shall not pass this way.